Hi. I guess you figured out by now I'm Avery Brooks. Well, I'm not Michael Dorn. You know I'm not Kate Mulgrew. I'm not Patrick Stewart. I must be Avery Brooks. Well, I'm not LeVar Burton either. You know, once I was in a parade, in Hollywood parade, and the children were yelling and screaming as we were waving, you know, like that. And I could hear the people saying, well, who is he? You know, because I'm waving and smiling, you see. And they said, oh, I know. That's the one. You look so different without that thing on your face. You're blind. You're, and you look so different. But I'm not LeVar. I'm Avery Brooks. And uh, I play the role of Captain Benjamin Sisko. You know, when I first, uh, the agent called me up about doing this, uh, I laughed. And uh, actually, I turned to my wife and laughed. You know, and I said, well, because I know what they want me to do, to play some sort of alien, etc. If they had done that, we never would have met. But, um, you know, I, I really was uh, uh, quite uh, surprised that they wanted me to at least read for the role of then-commander uh, Sisko. And um, so I guess the rest is history. You know, I, I came out and did... Uh, you know, a screen test. I laughed the whole time because I just knew this wasn't going to happen. I don't approach this work any differently than any other work. That I am the sum of every preceding moment and that I bring all of that to bear to this present moment, yeah? And so I rarely step away from it and try to premeditate what is going to happen. And so sometimes, you know, I'm sure it works out okay, and sometimes it doesn't. But I mean, that's the nature of being human, it seems to me. Once, once one starts to think that they are profound every single moment, then, you know, I guess you can only do that in Hollywood, huh? But uh, we are fallible, and we are imperfect, and that's the thing that attracts me, you know, uh, to continuing this role is that he is human and then we keep plumbing the depths of what that means to be human one of the reasons that I that I decided ultimately you know to go on and do this for a while was to give children a chance to think about their lives in the long thought when you look at a world in which most children on the planet have either experienced the horror of seeing war or are fighting wars themselves or have decided that the world is not interested in them at all and therefore start to plan their funerals rather than thinking that there's going to be a world to inherit 400 years hence, or a thousand years hence, or a hundred for that matter. And that's why I did it, especially for brown children, though not exclusively. The, uh... So, I mean, I, I, I really enjoy this relationship that I have with my son, you know, Jake. And Sirach Lofton is very much like my own child from the very first moment. <laughs> He is my child. I love him like my own. He is indeed a part of my family. You can ask my blood children that. Um, so that's real, and it's a, a chance also for us to see father and son. And it's very important that that happen, that we experience this affection and the embrace, you know, between male people, especially in this country. But I'm also a professor at Rutgers University, and I have been um, teaching there since 1972. You know, I'm, I, I don't know how long this is going to last, this captain's chair thing, but 1972 I've been teaching at, at Rutgers. I'm a tenure professor in theater. And um, theater and drama and all these things, you know, it's about, among other things, trying to find one crystalline moment eh, between human beings. Eh, one small explosion, some memorable thing, some ephemeral thing that will, will be here and then be gone. And one thing I have to say to anybody you know, about anything is ultimately tell the truth. 
That's all. Tell the truth.